Hi everyone and thanks a lot for appreciating my 10 minutes video. In this video, I'll discuss one more chapter and that will be Neoplasia. I'm using some handwritten notes so that I can revise you with you in a less amount of time. But make sure you listen to my every word very, very carefully. So are you ready for it? Let's start it. Well, the first thing to understand here is about the definition. So neoplasia is defined as an uncontrolled growth which is more than what is required and will keep on continuing when even when the stimulus is removed. Neoplasia, it can be of two types. It can be hamartoma, it can be choristoma. Now, these are development anomalies, not exactly the term of neoplastic. Hamartoma is hamar tissue. Hamar tissue means hamar, matab, it's a normal site of a tissue. Remember, it's a normal site of a tissue. That is what is called as actually a hematoma. But cholestoma is a chorica tissue. Chorica tissue means abnormal site but a normal tissue. So this is very, very important. How do you name a tumor? You name a tumor as a benign tumor or a malignant tumor and you should be knowing about how to name them. For example, if you name a benign tumor, you call it papilloma. A malignant tumor can be called as squamous cell carcinoma, adenoma and similarly adenocarcinoma. For a muscle, you will put a oma name and for a mesenchymal tumor, you put a malignant term as sarcomas. So these are terms you'll often come across. A mixed tumor, for example, a parotid will have a pleomorphic adenoma. Wim's tumor again is a mixed tumor and there is a teratoma of again a very, very good example of what is called as a mixed tumor. Well, what do you see in a microscopic tumor? Very, very important term is differentiation. Differentiation refers to a term how much the tissue is looking like the tissue of origin. That means if you look at this gland, it's a normal gland, right? This is a normal gland. But if you compare this normal gland to this gland number A, well, this gland is also looking at the normal gland at all. But if you look at this one, the cells here are hyperchromatic, pleomorphic, high NC ratio, but the cells or glands here are looking like the organ gland. And this becomes a well differentiated adenocarcinoma. But when the glands become completely anaplastic, you can't be able to differentiate whether the cells are glands or not. It is called as poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. Well, that will, will explain to us what is the difference of dysplasia and anaplasia. The common findings of dysplasia and anaplasia, common findings are pleomorphism, hyperchromatism, high NC ratio and loss of relative. All these four features are more in anaplasia compared to a dysplasia. Okay. Remember, definition wise, a dysplasia is disordered growth, while anaplasia is called as loss of differentiation. This is how they will look like. Well, this is a normal tissue. Look at the dysplastic tissue. Remember, they will always start from the lower one third. And this is anaplastic tissue in which it will also show you the invasion into the tissues. And notice there is hyperchromatism, pleomorphism, high NC ratio, and all the findings you can expect in any tumor. Okay. Next one. Next is what are the features of malignancies? A simple mnemonic aim, and any one of them is sufficient to call it malignant. It can be anaplasia, it can be invasion, or it can be metastasis. Moving on to cell cycle, a very important term. First of all, understand the sequence. Sequence is G0. It then goes G1, then S, then G2 and M. A G1 can go to resting phase G0 and can again return back to G1 if required. Well, if you look at a chromosome point of view, so at the S phase, the chromatid arms will duplicate, will multiply, right? Now, this is at the M phase when the two chromatid arms will separate out and hence M is called as mitotic phase. To understand the my mutations, we have to understand the checkpoints. The two type checkpoints, one is a G1S checkpoint and one is a G2M checkpoint. A cell will stop at a checkpoint and if there's a mutation will cause repair. If mutation is possible or mutation is the repair, sorry, repair is possible, it will go back to cell cycle. But if it is not possible, the cell has to undergo cell death called as apoptosis. Talking about the cell cycle inhibitors. In inhibitors also called as breakpoints of a cell. The breaks are a family. The family is CIPKIP and INK4A. The CIPKIP family belongs to or also called as CDKNA, while as INK4 is called as CDKNB. The inhibition of the CIPKIP is at G1S and G2M, both of them, whereas the INK4 is at G1S, G1S only. Now, the examples of the CIPKIP are P212757, well, that examples of the INK4 as P14 and 16, most importantly, but that examples you can remember is 17 and 18. Well, these are the cell cycle inhibitors. We talk about the proliferators. The proliferators are very simple to remember. In cyclins, it is cyclin D, E, A, B, and the cyclin dependent kinases which will activate them are 4, 2, 2, 1. Now remember the sequence D, E, A, B, 4, 2, 2, 1. D, E, A, B, 4, 2, 2, 1. The first two act on G1S phase, the next two act on G2M phase. So ultimately, this is how they will act on the G1S and on the G2M phase. Okay, this is very, very important. Ensure you remember this during the exams. 
Now I am going to do what are the hallmarks of a cancer. A cancer will have a steel ATM as a mnemonic. So cancer will have self-sufficient growth signal also called as oncogene activation, tumor suppressor gene inactivation, then E is evasion of apoptosis, A is altered cell metabolism, L is limitless replication potential, A is agenesis, T is tumor immunity and M means metastasis. Let's start with the first one, oncogene. And in this oncogene, we'll first understand what is a proto-oncogene and what is an oncogene. Well, proto-oncogene, remember, it's a normal gene and that is physiological gene. When it becomes tumorous, it's then called as oncogene. The tumor suppressor gene, normal function is to suppress a tumor. And a very good example of tumor suppressor gene is this one called as P53, also called as multiple pulley span of a cell cycle or guardian of a genome. Remember, it's called so because codes for 53 kilo Dalton protein. Well, how that get activated is like a guardian. So, guardian get activated when there's hypoxia or there's any oncogenic stress, this will activate the P53 expression. The P53 will activate P21 and I hope you remember from the SIP kip, the P21 inhibits at G1S and G2M and that is how the cell cycle stops, repairs and if possible, it will also need to cause apoptosis. On mutation, it will lead to this syndrome with a mnemonic of blast, well, breast, brain, lung, adrenal, stomach and skin tumor can be caused by a P3 mutations, the inherited form of which is called as Lee from any syndrome. Next comes the RB gene called as governor of proliferation. So what happens here is whenever there's a growth signal for a proliferation, what activates is a cell cycle proliferators. There's cyclins D, E, A and B. The first one to activate is cyclin D, which will then combine with CDK4 and 6. The cyclin D will act on the RB gene and on which the E2F is First of all, E2F is elongation factor 2 is linked. But the moment the cyclin D acts on it, the E2F becomes free. And the moment the E2F becomes free, this starts causing proliferation both at G1S and G2M by activating other cyclins like cyclin E and cyclin A. The important point to remember is this change from the active form of RB, which is hypophosphorylated, to the inactive form of RB, which is hyperphosphorylated. Remember, the hyperphosphate form is what is causing proliferation in case of RB protein. The mutation of this RB can occur if there is any of these four things. There's a loss of RB, there's a loss of P14. Remember, the P14 is the INK4. It is amplification of CDK and or the cyclin D, or can be a virus HPV. Remember, HPV is the one which inhibits the RB by E7 protein, whereas the E6 protein inhibits the P53 of them. Well, remember one thing that this mutation will lead to some cancers like it can lead to osteosarcoma, retinoblastoma and can also lead to pineoblastoma. A patient who has bilateral retinoblastoma and a pineoblastoma is said to having a suffering from what is called as trilateral retinoblastomas. Another important point is what is called as Warburg effect. In Warburg effect, what you see is glucose enters the cell and every glucose is converted to lactic acid. The lactic acid goes to the mitochondria and here is converted to the nucleotide lipids and the amino acids to make more and more tumor cell. This unique effect is called as Warburg effect because it requires glucose only, it's called glucose hunger and remember because it does not require oxygen, it is called as aerobic glycolysis because it makes lactic acid even in presence of oxygen. Okay. Next, what comes is its application, what is called PET scan, is a limited application of this. Okay. Limited replication potential. This happens because of the activation of telomerase enzyme, very, very important. And then comes what is called as angiogenesis. What you have to you know is there are three pro angiogenic factors like VEGF, angiogenin, and the hypoxia induced factor is very, very important here. How does the tumor cell evade immune system? It does so by having inhibition of or negative antigen negative mhc1 and that is a very important component one more thing is immunomodulation i have made a different video out of this please watch about it it talks about a ctla4 inhibitor it talks about the pd1 and the pdl1 which will also inhibit the t cell action against the apc these are the drugs which is quite active against ctla4 pd1 and the pdl1 the same question was asked recently in the rnct exam next there is a discontinuous spread what is called as metastasis it can occur by lymphatics for carcinoma Hematogenous for sarcomas and direct spread occurs what is seen in ovarian tumors. A very important topic in cancer is something called as tumor lysis syndrome. When the tumor cells break with the effect of chemotherapy, the potassium comes out causing hyperkalemia, phosphate comes out causing hyperphosphatemia, uric acid comes out causing hyperuricemia. But remember, when the calcium increases, the phosphate must decrease, and hence the fourth finding is hypocalcemia and not hypercalcemia. This is very, very important. Okay. I'm going to diagnosis. You can diagnose this by using a 20 to 24 gauze needle causes FNAC. You can use technique called as 
Expert histology in which you can do a pap smear with the help of IR spatula. This question is also as an image based question. The fixative for this is called as 95% ethanol. You can do imprint histology like a bone marrow patch preparation, or you can do an actual biopsy by using a wedge biopsy or an incisional or a core biopsy. Or what you can do is very importantly, you can actually do a frozen section examination. Okay, but remember, when you do a biopsy, you have to fix it by using 10% formula. For electron microscopy, you have to use glutaral dehyde, and for GI or a sperm morphology assessment, you have to use buoyance fluid. This is very, very important. You can stain any tissue by HNE stain and sorry, you do HNE stain, and a special stain used here is called as IHC immunohistochemistry. The IHC can be of various types, like for carcinoma, it is cytokeratin, for sarcoma, it is vimentin, for muscle, it is desmin, for melanoma, it is HMB45, and not to forget the neuroendocrine tumor, which has sarcotopicin, promogranin, and neuron specific alloys. The two new methods, apart from the tumor marker, which is a separate topic altogether, this is what is flow cytometry, used for diagnosis of the leukemia's lymphomas, and you will come to liquid biopsy, which is actually looking for these tumor cells in the peripheral blood without the need of doing a biopsy. This is called as liquid biopsy, also called as circulating tumor cells. Well, I am very sure this I'm very sure this was a quite helpful video for you. If you really liked it, please subscribe to my channel and like this video and make sure you let me know what is the next topic you want. Thank you, God bless you all, and best wishes for the upcoming exam. Bye-bye.